Integrated Pest Management IPM, in cacao plantations. A healthy and productive cacao plantation is the source of income for cacao families. Unfortunately, we have insects, fungi, and other pests that damage the crop and can cause up to 80% production losses. In this animation, we'll focus on the integrated management of two important diseases, frosty pod rot and black pod. In agroforestry systems, integrated management consists of carrying out different tasks in the field, such as regulating the shade of other trees in the plantation, improving the soil, application of preventatives, inputs, and disease control, as well as motivating the producer to implement the integrated management plan. It's important to know how to recognize some characteristics of the diseases to develop such a plan. Frosty pod rot is caused by a fungus. It begins with an appearance of malformations in young fruits. In addition, this disease is very dangerous when a white powder substance appears that can easily spread to other fruits. Fruits around two months old are the most susceptible. Unlike frosty pod rot, cacao fruits are more susceptible to black pod where they are five months old or close to ripening and when there are heavy rain events. Knowing these aspects of the diseases, we will give an example of how to carry out integrated management, starting from the beginning of a new annual production cycle. When the main harvest season ends, we can consider that a new production cycle will begin. Next, we will show you an example of the construction of an IPM plan. This is how the plan begins. A maintenance pruning of the cacao trees is carried out, which is generally prior to the start of the rains. In pruning, we must take advantage of eliminating all the diseased fruits of any size and with any symptoms when we see them. Remember that at this time, we must also maintain the drains on the ground to avoid puddles. After the maintenance pruning and with the onset of rains, it is ideal to fertilize the soil so that the cacao tree can be prepared for a new production and be vigorous. With the rain, a stage of abundant flowering begins and two months later, we'll have the greatest presence of young fruits which are susceptible to frosty pod rot. It's time to start the phytosanitary pruning that consists in the elimination of all the diseased fruits and diseased branches of the cacao trees in any stage of development of the damage. Diseased fruits are cut with scissors left on the ground and can be covered with leaf litter to prevent the disease from spreading. When we have the presence of many young fruits on our trees, we must remove the diseased fruit every eight days for at least two months. If feasible, we recommend to apply preventative inputs to our plants, like a copper-based product or biological agents. These preventatives inputs can be applied one month after the abundant flowering to protect the growing fruits. If possible, make another application three months later. As these fruit grow, phytosanitary pruning can be done every two weeks and then once a month in the months where there is less presence of young susceptible fruit. When there is presence of ripe fruit, phytosanitary pruning can be combined with the harvest. Six months after the first fertilization, it's necessary to fertilize the soil for a second time. This will help the fruits to better resist diseases in their maturation. If we unify all the tasks included in our annual IPM plan, it will look like this. This would be our vision guide to plan the tasks and not leave out any action. In addition, we will have a better outlook in case we need to make any changes to our plan. 
What happens in places where there are two rain peaks and two production peaks in the year? In these places, there will be, therefore, two noticeable blooms. All the same prevention and control tasks mentioned above must be carried out for each flowering peak, that is, twice a year. Another very important task that must be carried out is a good distribution of shade in the plantations. Shade coverage between 30 and 50 percent is recommended, well distributed in the cacao plantation, avoiding patches with a lot of light or with a lot of shade. Finally, we cannot forget that trees that are not productive or are highly attacked by diseases must be replaced by new grafted trees or trees with reliable seed, carrying out this task progressively. Dear Cacao Family, If we implement integrated management like the one we have seen in this animation, production losses will not be greater than 20% and we will have better yields which translate into a benefit for our pockets. Chocolate for All project, financed by the Inter-American Development Bank and executed by Heifer International Project and Cotier in their field actions.